In this video, we'll be looking at part two of the precipitation reaction and limiting reagent lab. In part two, we collect data from a series of different trials. And in this demonstration, we'll be looking specifically at trial three and trial seven. Now, before we begin, we need to set up two burettes. In this burette, I have placed cobalt-2 hexahydrate. And in this burette, I have a solution of sodium phosphate. Both solutions in this example are 0 0.100 molar in concentration. For trial three, I want to dispense approximately 20 milliliters of my cobalt-2 nitrate solution and eight milliliters of my sodium phosphate solution. In order to do this, I'm going to record my initial volume for each and my final volume for each. The difference between those two should be 20 for the cobalt-2 nitrate solution and eight for the sodium phosphate solution. To begin, I note that I have 1.39 milliliters reading in my first burette with my cobalt solution. I'm now going to dispense my 20 milliliters. I've got my eye level approximately where I know it needs to end up, around 21 milliliters. As it gets closer, I slow down the rate at which I'm dispensing the cobalt solution. Make sure I get everything off the tip without touching, inserting the burette into the solution and I'll note my final volume at 21.42 milliliters. I'll then dispense the sodium phosphate solution. I'll note that my initial volume here is 1.00 milliliters. As I dispense the solution, I note that my product starts to appear as a purple solid that precipitates out. Again, I want to add approximately eight milliliters. So since I started at one, I want to end as close to nine as possible. And I'll note that I actually managed to stop at 9.00 milliliters. I'm going to give this a good swirl, make sure it's all mixed up. We can use a glass stirring rod in order to do that. And then we want to let that react for at least 10 minutes. I'm going to note down on the board what our, uh, our volumes were. So we had 1.39 milliliters for our initial volume for our cobalt solution and 21.42 for our final volume. For the phosphate solution, I started off at 1.00 milliliters and I ended very nicely at 9.00 milliliters. Instead of making you watch me do that again, for our trial seven, I have prepared a trial seven sample. So now we have one for trial three, and one for trial seven, and we are all finished with our burettes. You can see here the initial and final volumes for trial seven that I collected. Now, once these have had the opportunity to react for 10 minutes, we're going to filter them in order to collect the solid to determine our yield. Before we do this, we want to prepare our filter paper. You can see here that I have fluted this filter. I folded it so that it'll be easier to filter our solids with. And I've also placed the trial number 
here, trial three, along with my name or your name. I've done the same with a piece of filter paper for trial seven. Prior to pouring anything in, I will get the mass of each one of these filter papers and record that in my notebook. This way, when my product ends up on the filter paper later, I'll be able to subtract out the mass of the filter paper in order to determine the mass of the product. So here's my trial three filter paper. Here's my trial seven filter paper. I'm going to take my solid. I'm going to pour this through the filter paper and allow all the liquid to drain out. I'll do the same thing with trial seven. This filtration process takes some time, and once all the liquid here had drained out, I would add a little bit of deionized water to each one of my samples in order to rinse out any remaining solvent and diluted ions that it still contained. Once they had lost all of the liquid, once all of the supernatant had been collected down here, I would take each one of these filter papers and place them in a drying oven in order to drive off all the water so we could collect just the solid. Now, because that too takes some time, I have prepared both a trial seven and a trial three example. You can see here my trial three example. I now have a nice dry solid. But take this, place it upon the balance, note my total mass, subtract the mass of the empty filter paper, and determine the mass of my product. In the case of trial three, I managed to get a yield of product of 0 0.1075 grams. In the case of my trial seven, I had a yield of 0 0.2549 grams. I can compare both of these isolated yields to the theoretical yield that I can predict based on my initial volumes of each of my substances.